Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the concept Nazca or Nazca. I'm not really sure exactly how to pronounce it. Pretty cool. I kind of like the lines on this one. It's a nice large front flipper. Um, and as is the case with a lot of concept knives, they're doing fun and interesting designs that also work as functional cutting tools. So they kind of check a lot of boxes for a lot of people. Um, this also has an extremely competitive price tag on it for what it is. I feel like it, you know, if you're familiar with concept, you're going to, you're going to kind of know that that's what they do. I will make sure that this knife is linked right down below so you guys can check it out. It does help my channel when you use my links, but that is entirely up to you. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. Thanks so much to Concept for sending this in for review. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is a pretty big knife. Not huge, but it is it is on the larger side. Overall length is coming in at about eight and a half inches. Blade length. I'm going to say that's 3.75 to the tip of the titanium scale. Uh, cutting edge is about 3.6. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do just a couple of size comparisons today up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. Uh, you can see here that this is almost exactly, in fact, it is exactly the same overall length as the Rat 1. And let's put it up against the Demco AD 20.5. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? There we go. And last but not least, the Benchmade Bugout. All righty. How's the action on this guy? Pretty similar to other concepts. Uh, I feel like their dialing in of action is just getting better and better. This, uh, as a front flipper, works flawlessly. It's exactly what you want. I've been kind of testing here lately. A good front flipper, I'll be able to manipulate it with the side of my index finger, which is the case here. There's plenty of room for you to brace properly on the frame without fear of without too much fear of throwing it across the room, which is honestly a, at least a slightly present danger with every front flipper. It is not the most convenient and safe means of deploying a knife, but it is a fad that we have kept alive by buying these things. And the more you play with them, the more you kind of figure them out. It's not my favorite way to deploy it. I'm always kind of bummed to see, you know, knives that it's the only means of deploying it. But you know, if you're gonna do it, you better do it right, and they did it right here. The action is nice and smooth, very controlled. Move that frame lock out of the way, and just with a little bit of encouragement, it will drop shut uh, into the closed position. There is no double clutch, and there's honestly a pretty long safe zone here where the unsharpened portion of the blade will come down on your finger. I'm really sorry about the blade reflection. I'm wearing an orange shirt today for some reason, so <laughs> we see some, some orange there. Um, but yeah. It's fine. Um, it, it's uh, it's great, and the detent feels like it's properly tuned for the front flipper, so no complaints there. Let's do carry profile. Uh, thickness up against the Para 3. You can see here it's about the same. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Where's the PM2? There it is. So it's a pretty long knife, but honestly, it's about the same as the PM2, uh, and it's nowhere near as tall because of the kind of narrow profile we've got going on here. So it shouldn't be as, you know, for a, for a knife that's on the larger side, uh, it's it's really not that difficult to carry it. It's, it's fairly compact. But if you've been carrying knives that are smaller and lighter, then obviously this will be something you'll need to adjust to. Let's go ahead and weigh it. For materials, we are looking at S35VN uh, right there. And then we're looking at two-tone titanium. Um, we've also got some nice blue accents and a milled clip, which is always nice to see. Full backspacer and milled clip, um, which is something we should definitely take note of there for value. Um, we have uh, milling on the inside of the titanium for weight reduction. I'm going to guess this thing weighs about four and a quarter ounces, maybe 4.5. Ah, almost had it. I'm getting better. <laughs> you probably checked that before the video. You'll never know. But no, truthfully, I don't. I like to, I play this game with myself. Um, I try to guess. 4.37 ounces, not perfect ratios, but it's fine, right? Most people aren't going to uh, complain about that weight for this size of knife. Balance is actually right behind the pivot, right where you put your index finger in the standard grip. So it really doesn't feel all that heavy. It honestly feels extremely well balanced. Let's go ahead and um, get out my tools for a hardware check. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I'm going to guess that 
Um, we're looking at T8 across the board here, at least I hope so. The pivot is a T8. Do we have it? No, they're going to be T6, darn it. So we have three T6 screws for the frame on each side and two for the pocket clip, one for the lock bar insert, which you don't have to mess with. So it has one, I'm sorry, two additional screws over what I consider to be minimal hardware, which is only two per side. And they are T6, which is a bummer. I like T8 and, and up. This is not a deal breaker. It just means you need to make sure and have quality tools and a place to put your hardware and you'll still be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness. I'm pretty sure that Concept is a big fan of 145 thousandths or so. So that's what I'm going to... Mm, this one might be a little thicker. Might be 150. Let's take a look. Actually, yes. It says 155, 155 thousand. So think ZT0562 territory on the thicker side. If we're going to call, I, I I consider 135 thousandths to be about the median for the for the knife world. Um, okay, let's go ahead and get to the meat and potatoes. I like the flow of this. Normally, I'm like, if you're going to do a tanto, there better be. I, I kind of like. I, I don't gen generally like love tantos. It's not my favorite blade shape, but. What I do appreciate is a design that flows together, right? Lines that look good. Like the handle was designed to go with the blade, which you would think is something that we would see all the time. A lot of times, <laughs> the handle doesn't go with the blade, or the pocket clip doesn't go with the handle, or the whole thing just looks like it was slapped together on, on different corners of the world without any communication between the designers. No. Not in this case. The entire knife looks like it was designed by the same per uh, person with plenty of purpose and, uh, you know, d design intention in mind. Um, so I, I appreciate that. On top of that, I, I really was expecting it to not be comfortable, but it actually is pretty comfortable. I would say the safest grip is here with a single finger locking into this little ledge. You can squeeze two fingers in here, but you really need to be paying attention uh, to how close your index finger is to that blade. So you can get right up behind it. You can kind of choke back, but your middle finger is going to land right on that peak. So depending on how you hold it and what you're doing, your ergonomic experience might be better or worse. It's all right. I'd give it a B plus on ergonomics. It's better than I thought it was going to be. I really thought it was going to be jagged. Uh, the edges have been knocked down a little bit, but you can see that edge is still fairly abrupt. The pocket clip is flat though, and it's nicely rounded off at the edge. So fortunately, it's not the pocket clip that's creating any discomfort. And any discomfort that is present is very minimal. So I can't really complain. I mean, you know, if you're going to use this knife for 30 minutes at a time without gloves, it's probably going to bother your hands a little bit. But it is not the worst thing that I have ever seen. Normally, I do not like two-tone on the blade or the handle. But because of all the straight lines on this knife, I kind of appreciate it. I, it kind of looks good to me. The, you know, there are a few different variations of this. So if you want to, I think you can actually get a plain one if you want it. You have to look, use the link down below. It'll show you all the different variants. But the placement of the hardware and the fact that it's anodized blue in this case, the contrast with the hardware and the two-tone handle, it looks pretty good. I I don't know. I like them. That's going to come down to preference, but I think it looks good. I also like the backspacer and the pocket clip design. They also all flow together. Um, it just, uh, it looks good. This is a pretty straightforward Tanto. Um, my favorite part about this is that Concept is doing their tumbled finish on it, which looks really great. I'm sure that you have different options for finishes, but their tumbled finish looks awesome. We have a little bit of a flat carrying out to about 75, maybe 80% of the blade. Um, we have, I mean, it, it is just Tanto, like straightforward American Tanto. Um, so cutting edge, it gets okay down here. Same with here. There's no belly and uh, you're going to face a little bit of um, extra difficulty sharpening because you have to sharpen two different edges. Um, but the benefit is that you have two different edges to work with. So it's like uh, Nick Shabazz first pointed out to me. Um, you can use the edge, uh, this shorter edge up here for scraping, and you can use this for cutting tasks if you want to get that specific, or you can just jam the blade in and use it however you're going to use it, right? It's yours. Um, so whatever. Uh, as per usual, Concept has put a bunch of codes and crap all over the blade, which is not that big, but it's still kind of annoying, right? And then they still put the name of the knife on there. I don't mind the APK design. So that's who, that's the designer behind it. I don't mind that. You know, the manufacturer's logo, the designer's information, and the blade steel.
but the codes and putting the name of the knife on the – it's like – I've said this before. It's like when somebody's driving a Corvette and they put Corvette on the windshield, right, or Camaro. If you're watching this right now and you drive a Camaro and on the windshield you've put a banner at the top that says Camaro, why did you do that? I the the like <laughs> the people who are going to care are already going to know what it is. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, don't tell don't let me tell you how to live your life. I'm just saying that's weird, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Um but uh anyways, um, yeah, I don't really like that, but it's not, it's not going to stop the knife from functioning correctly, right? So, uh, access to the lock bar is very good. We have a nice, generous cut out there. That's how we should have this done all the time. This is just a great example on how to do that. It's been nicely knocked down. There's not like a steep or, um, you know, really aggressive edge there. Um, just really easy to disengage. Nice, safe, nice safe zone for having the knife drop down to your thumb, right? However you like to do it, whether you like to do it like this, or you like to do it like this. Either way, it's going to work, right? Um, by the way, uh, deploying the uh, – <laughs> now I'm like unable to do it. Deploying your knife like this is not a safe way to do that. It's uh, it, I, I do that to test to see, um, you know, how – basically how easy it is to get leverage with, you know, considering the blade length and mass against the detent, right? If I can do it with my index finger – Usually, it's substantially easier to do it with my thumb, right? Which is how you should be doing it. I do not recommend at all that anybody actually deploy their knife that way. That's a good way to throw it into a river or into a person, which is not recommendable. There's no lanyard hole. There's no lanyard hole. Sorry. Um, the backspacer, I think, looks really good. Um, and it probably helps out with balance a little bit considering it's the entire length of the body. I like that it comes to a little peak right here. That's nice. They could have just left it flat, but they didn't. That's something that – it's not a major cost, but it does add, right, it's additional machining. And it's uh, – it costs a lot more than putting two standoffs in there. Um, so that's – I appreciate that. Also appreciate that the clip is also milled uh, in titanium. That's nice. Uh, there is a lock bar insert that doubles as the – oh, wait. By the way, the carry depth is here. There's actually quite a bit of knife sticking up out of your pocket. I'm not going to call it shallow. It's on the tail end of medium depth carry. But just to let you know, that's what you're going to see sticking up out of your pocket. Nice ramp here. Should rise to meet most uh, pocket seam thicknesses. And we have a smooth surface, so in and out of the pocket should be pretty easy. Stop pin located in its usual position. And it's blue. <laughs> I don't usually see stop pins um, that are – most likely the stop pin in the hardware is not titanium. It's probably steel that has been like heat treated to have that blue color. Steel can turn bronze and blue like titanium, which just doesn't have the, the range of color like titanium does for heat anodization. Um, but yeah, uh, it's blue. So there you go. No shouldering, but it doesn't need it. This knife runs on bearings. I, I don't know if I mentioned that. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick. No pivot lash. Very consistent action. In here, I really feel like concept is getting better uh, with uh, the surfaces on the inside. Detent, I think it's plenty appropriate for a, a front flipper, and we have perfect centering with no detent lash. You know, this knife is going to be a little big for some people, and the Tanto is not going to be the, the most ideal thing. But gosh, at 170 bucks, titanium S35VN, wonderful fit and finish. Honestly, well designed for how appealing the S. A lot of times you have to sacrifice like function for aesthetic design. And in this case, you're actually getting a good balance of both. It's a handsome blade that's not doing too much crazy. There's always gonna be there's always gonna be at least one or two people saying, it's a gas station knife. It's a gas. Every single upload that exists on YouTube of any knife anywhere has at least one person saying it looks like a gas station knife. That should tell you. How broad and ridiculous and useless that term has become. It has no meaning anymore. But people will still say it, right? They will say it until they figure it out, until it clicks, right? And then they'll stop saying it. That's just the natural progression of people who jump into the knife world, right? If you find yourself saying it all the time, you're probably pretty new. After a while, you stop saying it because it loses meaning. Um, but I, I like the design here. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. It's not too crazy. It's not too in your face, but it still has a lot of personality. 
plenty of function here, obviously a very functional uh, blade and the value for what you're actually getting in materials and uh, execution of those materials is very good, 170 bucks. You know, um, this is uh, this is pretty good. I, I'm gonna say, you know, it's not my, personally, it's not my favorite design in the whole world, but I'll, I'll give credit where it's due. Um, I like this one. There's there's a lot of good here and there's very little bad for what it was designed to be. So yes, uh, this is a recommendable knife and you guys should definitely check it out. At 170 bucks, it's just not, I mean, Concept is really good about their pricing. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. You'll find this in my ro most recommended knives playlist if you want to check that playlist out. Uh, like I said, this will be linked right down below so you guys can check the knife out if you want. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex if you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you'd like to check out my other content. I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.